Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a webinar on manufacturing careers, where today we are gonna talk specifically about a career as a machinist. So I'd like to, first of all, thank our uh, partners in this endeavor. So I'd like to thank the Dayton Region Manufacturers Association, as well as the Ohio College Tech Prep. And then I'd also like to thank Noble Tool because one of their machinists is here with us today and is going to talk to us about his career. And that is Matt Vanderbrock. So thank you, Matt, for joining us today. We really appreciate thank you for it. having me. Thanks. And as I said, Matt's career is as a machinist and he works for Noble Tool. And we will dive right in and uh, get him to tell us a little bit about his career and how he got started and, and where he's at and maybe what's next. So um, Matt, if you could tell us, tell us a little bit about your job and tell us about how your job relates to your company's success. So my job title is manufacturing engineer at Noble Tool. That involves running wire EDM machines, CNC machines, 3D printers, blades, CNC or CMM machines, and programming CNC machines for other operators. So it sounds and to me like without that, without you in the company, you, there's nobody to take care of the machines. Um, not true. The the operators can program smaller parts by themselves, but for more complicated, intricate things, I program them for them. Okay. Awesome. Because it, it can be hundreds of thousands of lines of code for them. And that doesn't okay. work well for them. And without you taking care of um, the machines and programming them um, for the specific job, uh, your company can't uh, execute the jobs required. Correct. Okay. Okay. So very important. Your skill set is very important to your company's success. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. So tell me about a typical day. Matt comes into work and after he gets a cup of coffee, what does he do? I sit down at the computer. If there's a wire job, which is my main machine that I run personally, I will get that started. Those have a longer run time, usually over an hour. And then if somebody needs a part program, they'll get, they'll, my, they will have that part laying on my desk, the print for the job. And then I'll open the model file up and start programming it. Then that'll usually get me to about lunch. And then my wire job will probably be done at that point. And I'll see if anybody else needs a part program. All right, all right. So lots of lots of programming time, and then I'm imagining you're running down to to also check on the the um, the the part being made to make sure all the specifications are right and and sort of do it do a little bit of quality control as well. Yeah, I'll talk with the operator and make sure he likes the order of operations that we're doing, and if there's he wants more stock left on one part for something else, then we can do that and we can reorder things, use a different tool maybe, but yeah, it's kind of a collaborative effort with the programming. Okay, great. So how long have you been um, at Noble Tool? And then how long have you been working in the industry in general, in the manufacturing industry? A little over two and a half years for both. So this is my first job in manufacturing. And I started a little after my boss bought the company and he gave me the opportunity. So been here ever since. Great, great. So what's the one thing, if you were talking to somebody and telling them about their job, what's the one thing that you always say that you really, really like about your job? I like being able to be hands-on with the process and what we're making. It's really cool to see just a big chunk of metal turn into something usable and functional for somebody else. So that's one thing I really enjoy. Absolutely, making things with your hands. Got it, yep. got it, perfect. So um, 
we heard a little bit already about the, the amount of time that you spend at a computer working on um, programming to make sure the tool is going to come out right um, as desired. Um, so what's a, you know, the, that typical day, how many days, how many hours a day are you spending, um, you know, at the computer versus in a team meeting or, um, you know, working, working as a group in a group? So it, it can really depend on what jobs we have going in the shop. Um, some days I can spend all day at the computer and that's still not enough. Or some days I might not be at the computer and be running a machine the whole time. So it kind of varies. Okay, so you've got some nice variability in your job, something different yep. every day. Yep. So what's the biggest challenge as a machinist? What is your, what's the biggest challenge for you every day? Um, the biggest challenge is finding the most efficient way to remove as much material as possible while doing it in a manner that makes sense. So you have a big part and a bunch of steel to remove. We have to figure out the most efficient way to remove that metal so we make as much money as possible on the job. Okay, and you, you wanna make the least number of cuts Probably, I would well, imagine. It, depending on the material, sometimes more cuts faster is okay. better than less cuts slower. Got it. So, got it. Okay. Okay. So, every, it sounds like every job is a, a new and different challenge for you based on the material you're using. And, okay. Yeah, very much so. It's like solving a puzzle every day. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what type of environment are you working in? Are you primarily in an office? Are you on a shop floor? Um, what, what type of environment are you in for the most part? I am out on the shop floor all day. Okay. So I have a computer out there that I use to program and I can overlook machines running while I do that. So I'm out on the shop floor. Awesome, awesome. Right in the middle of it. Yep. All right. Do you ever, are you ever expected to be on call? in the position that you're in? No, but I work some Saturdays. Okay, so. okay, but by choice, I imagine. Yes. Okay, Yes. okay, great, great. So how did you get to where you are? Um, you said you joined two and a half years ago. Um, what was before that? I mean, how did, you, how did you get to this position? What kind of education did you require? So I was at UC for a year and a half doing electrical engineering mm -hmm. and then I wasn't happy with that. And then I took a landscaping job and didn't like that. And then Jim bought the company and I knew Jim and he gave me the opportunity to step in here and fill a role that he needs filled. So I guess the engineering background is what helped me get here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And and did you have any, um, did you require any certifications or um, a two-year degree or anything like that? No. No? Awesome. So, so when you're hiring a new uh, person um, or somebody, when, when the organization is hiring a new person, um, if you're not the one responsible for that, what is, what, what is that, what does that person typically need? Um, to come work for the company? Do they need a certification? Do they need a two-year degree or the just, just willingness to jump in? Willingness to jump in helps. Um, a degree definitely does help. There are two-year degrees you can get that would help you out in this mm -hmm. field. Um, but as long as you're willing to put in the work, Jim's pretty willing to let you try it out and see if you fit or not. So Awesome. Awesome. So it sounds like you could potentially come right out of high school and yeah. learn the business. Definitely. Okay, super. So what is that skill that you value most in your, in your teammates? Um, that, you know, you're adding a new person to the company. What is the skill that you're looking for that, that you value the most? Um, I would probably say willingness to learn because I mean we, I work in a shop with a lot of people close to retirement age and they have a wealth of knowledge that I just don't have because I didn't know anything when I started this job 
So you just have to be able to listen to them because they've worked with the different materials. They know how they're going to react and some warp, some don't, some are more stable and they know the process better than I do. So you just have to be willing to learn from your peers. That's great. That is great. I love it. So what would, you know, if you were sitting down with a young high school student who was trying to discern uh, what to do next, what would you say? What would you say about somebody who is considering uh, the manufacturing field? What would you tell them? Um, there's a couple options that he, they would have. Um, they could find a shop like this and see if the boss is willing to give them a shot. And if they have somebody willing to train you and they're willing to make that investment in you, you can do that. Or there's community colleges. Sinclair is a great resource in Dayton that we have that has two, plenty of two-year programs for someone wanting to be a machinist. All right. And would you encourage him to go check it out? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What about, what about when a teacher, what do you want a teacher or a guidance counselor to say to a student who's thinking about manufacturing? Um, I think a guidance counselor should guide someone who's willing to put in that time and effort because this job, like you have, you have to do this job to learn what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. there, you can theorize about how things are gonna work out and how things won't work out, but unless you actually get the hands-on experience doing it, you're, you don't know how things will work out. Absolutely, so if they have someone who likes to work with their hands, and likes yep. to make things and likes to solve problems, um, maybe they should encourage them and push them towards being um, going to the manufacturing business and potentially being a machinist. Yep. All right. So what's a typical career path? You described the beginning where, you know, somebody gives you a shot. Somebody says, hey, this, this Matt guy could could, uh, could he's, he seems like he's got the, the desire to do this. Um, and you, you're, you're given a chance. What's the typical yep. career path? So for me, I worked under a gentleman who's now retired um, for about a year and a half. And he taught me how to run the wire and how to run the CNC machine. And he slowly introduced me to new steps in the process of machining, whether it's the programming or tools and different cycles on the machines. And then eventually you just get to the point where you can do the basic stuff and you just have to rely on whoever's training you for more complicated stuff. All right, all right. So, and, and with that training and with that development and more time and learning more machines and learning more processes, there are opportunities for, you know, moving up to the next level and then the next level uh, within yep. the company. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. Fantastic. So what are, what's the typical starting point? So for somebody coming in um, with, without a degree, potentially without a certification, jumping in from high school, what, what can they expect to start at? And then, um, you know, what's within the realm of the possible within a few years? Um, probably start out around $15 an hour, somewhere around there. It could be plus or okay. minus a dollar. Okay. And in a couple of years, you can get up to $22, $23 an hour. Okay, great, great. Sounds like great opportunities are, are there as well. Once again, if, if you're willing to jump in and, and give it a try. Um, so yeah. what, did we, what did we miss, Matt? What didn't I ask you about your job and about your career choice? Um, well, one thing that I think we might have missed is um, the attention to detail that being a machinist requires, because we're dealing with tolerances that are less than your human hair. So if you are not precise and accurate with how you're doing things and not paying attention, you can scrap apart real quick. 
So you have to be willing to nitpick yourself and make sure your, your ducks are in a row and you can make some good parts. You know, that's a, that's a very, very good point, Matt. And thanks for bringing that up because, you know, your time is money and materials are money, right? So yeah. you want to make sure that you're cutting the cutting once you're measuring 18 times. What's the, what's the saying measure yeah. twice, cut once, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, with you, it's probably measure more than once, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Measure more than twice um, to make sure that you, when you make that cut, it's the right cut. Yep. Fantastic. Anything else? Did we miss anything else? Um, I can't think of anything. Okay. Okay. Well, we certainly do appreciate your time today. Uh, great, great conversation today with Matt from Noble Tool, um, talking about being a machinist. And want to thank again the Dayton Region Manufacturers Association and Ohio College Tech Prep. Um, for helping us uh, bring these webinars to life. And thanks again, Matt, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.